natural gas uh, at a very sharp decline in price. Uh, the sharpest decline in price, this is yesterday, since January. Prices that were still up about 50% for the quarter, and we've recovered a little ground this morning, 552 on that gas. David Barnson wants to talk about this. All right, we've had this price spike in that gas in a quarter, a big spike. Who gets the blame? Well, the blame lies with those that are hurting the production side. We haven't had a price because of mo a price spike because of monetary inflation any more than when natural gas went from 15 to one. Nobody considered that to be radical deflation. It's a, ba a matter of supply and demand. That's how commodities work. And we have the ability in America to meet the demand with our supply. We have the ability in America to meet global demand with our domestic supply and we're not doing it the production side is what is causing prices to go up at the same time that demand is growing substantially in europe and asia and it's going to be growing here in the united states as we go into the winter season yeah do we have a price inflation problem if we get a cold winter i presume your answer is yes we do well, I consider it to be a problem. I don't think that there's any reason that we have to be experiencing five, six, seven dollar natural gas. Um, but uh, some apparently don't consider it to be a problem. They think that by actually curtailing production of the cleanest fossil fuel, that is the most responsible for electricity production, that is the most effective at meeting cooling demand, heating demand, and so many other aspects of the energy needs of our country and our globe. The other alternatives are actors in Russia meeting European demand, okay? This whole thing makes no sense geopolitically, but it also doesn't make sense environmentally. That's the thing is when I come here and talk about the need for fossil fuels, it's not because I'm a climate denier. It's because we are getting lower carbon emissions from the cleaner fuel that is natural gas. And we have the ability to export it out of liquefied natural gas terminals to Europe, to Asia at a big profit margin. That's a big tax revenue. It's organic wealth creation. So every box that different people want to check, growth in the economy, new jobs, blue collar jobs, environmental benefit, uh, the, the trade deficit, everything people talk about, natural gas can help meet. And we're sitting here curtailing production. <laughs> it's like I live in a fantasy land. I if don't I've understand got, it. I've got just 20 seconds left. I'm sorry I'm tight on time. Give me one stock to buy that cashes in on natural gas price rises. I, I've talked to you on the show about it before. UMI is the ticker. It's an ETF that is actively managed, UMI, around all of midstream energy. So now you're getting paid when natural gas is being transported, when it's being exported, when it's being stored. It covers the pipelines. It's by far, and, and it has about a 7% dividend yield. UMI is a great way to play natural gas, the whole energy infrastructure story, Stuart. I will take a 7% dividend yield at a time like this. I'll I know jump you on will. Yes, I know I you will, will. sir. Uh, David, thank you very much, sir. We'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot.